Welcome back! We've arrived at another puzzle here involving these lava stone things. And this puzzle can uh, leave you without a solution, uh, completely stranded if you're not careful, and it does involve some amount of guesswork, unfortunately. Yeah, I think uh, that didn't quite work out. Alright, it should reset itself once you get back. There we go. And then there's a random collection of stones that uh, disappear before you can get onto it. I'm going to try to take the most optimal path, but I have a funny feeling that these are going to disappear. Yeah, okay. This is kind of a little bit uh, annoying, but... Uh, I think the key to this is to take a path that involves not going through many of the uh, stones that get obliterated at the start. Let's hope that works. Nope, that didn't work. Thankfully that, that did not disappear. If that disappeared, that'd be bad. Okay, that's not good. Alright, someday I'll get it. Alright, let's see if this works. So far, so good. Except not. Okay. Alright. Thankfully, the game is not that cruel to you when it comes to um, getting rid of stones that would leave you trapped, which is a good, which is a very good thing. All right, so let's see if this works. I'm kind of a little bit suspicious, but I'm gonna. Okay, good, we made it. Whew. Okay. Are you coming? Hold your horses. Thankfully, we don't have to worry about uh, moving Sophia across. Nice moves. Thanks. All right. I don't know why we just couldn't jump off there and go right here, but. Maybe that's a bit of a... Maybe there's a gap there that I'm not seeing. Well, let's see where this goes. The only way is forward. Here's your shining city. Not what I expected, that's for sure. Indeed. And the place is still humming, maintaining the air pressure for untold centuries. Could it be? Is this the Colossus that we read about in the Lost Dialogue? It was huge, apparently. And it certainly looks that way from the outside. So what all have we got in here? Some sort of statue here overlooking the room. A frog statue. Hungry for Oracalcum. Well, let's see this here, because this is something that won't require using up more beads. It's a receptacle for the stone discs. Well, let's try our discs out. Alright, noon sun, full moon, and city. That didn't do anything. It didn't do anything because what we need to do here is we need to use the configuration that was posted on that wall outside, which will be random each time you play the game, by the way, so that's not a set thing. And you need to use the noon sun, the full moon, and the volcano, um, and that's why I pointed out that it was a volcano, because it was all pointed, which is the only pointy thing here as far as I know. No matter what, though, those three will be 
the same as far as which of the four on each disc is used. But as far as the positions are concerned, that's completely random. So let's put the noon sun there, and the other two were on the west, I believe. Uh -oh. What did we just do? What did you do now, Lee? I think I turned it on. Uh oh. Uh oh. I told you, John, it would be of some use to us. Kerner, I knew I smelled a rat. I don't know if I'd call it that. Congratulations, Dr. Jones. You've just handed the Third Reich its ultimate victory. And take more than a few aura calcum bombs to conquer the world, Uberman. Bombs? The gods don't need bombs. Take a look around. What do you think this astonishing machinery was used for? Central Power Station? Wrong! As Plato himself well knew, this was a factory for manufacturing higher beings! While you've been wandering around, we've been stockpiling orichalcum. And now we have all we need! Are you ready for the greatest moment in history, Doctor? I'll pass, thanks. Scientific discoveries belong to the board, Chons! That's something you, of all people, should understand. Did you notice all those hideously deformed bones? Experiments gone awry, unworthy slaves sacrificed in the name of knowledge. Progress has its price, you know. Sure, but what price? Maybe they weren't quite human to begin with. Inhuman or subhuman? They were destroyed by their physical imperfections, and they bathed in the awesome power of this device. Fortunately, we suffer from no such imperfection. What makes you think that? You really believe in this godhood business? Why not? As a god, I shall know everything, be everywhere, rule everyone! We both shall rule, Herr Doctor. Eh? Don't be silly, Colonel. You're not prepared for this. <laughs> we shall see. I was wondering when the double cross was going to occur. Tell you what, let's all go home and die in bed. We are scientists. We can't live. We must test the machine. And you'll make a fine volunteer. No! What? If anyone's going to become a god, it must be me. You don't make me laugh. I am in charge of this operation, you spineless sausage. Activate the machine. <sighs> a test is a test. Plato suggested 10B. Let's try that. Wait. What now, Charles? Wait a minute. What about this? What about Plato's tenfold error? What about it? Most of Plato's numbers were way off target. Hmm. Just a thought. You may be right. We should divide by ten. Try one bead. One bead it is. Himmel, it's working! Whoops. A small bead for a small man, eh, Charles? Now it's your turn. I don't think so. Uh, no thanks. Godhood's for egomaniacs like you. No, unless you want my men to move you. That's better. What makes you think you can outdo the old kings? Science, my boy. We have it, and say it didn't. I wouldn't say that. Here goes. Hang on a second. Alright. 
Now, you can make a lot of really bad dialogue choices here, because ultimately you don't want to participate in this experiment. Um, and so you want to try to talk uh, Uberman ultimately out of doing this, so don't pick this. Let's talk this over. There's no time. How many beads should be used? No beads, you crazy old man. Come now, Doctor. There's your scientific curiosity. Listen, what if Plato's error went the other way? How do you mean? Dividing by ten didn't work, but multiplying by... All right, John. You decide. How many beads should be used? No beads. Forget your stupid obsession. Really, Dr. John? Get a grip on yourself. Please, Professor, don't make me do this. Look on the bright side. You'll be leaving your cares behind. For your sake, I hope this doesn't work. Why not? Once I'm a god, I'm sending you straight to hell. I'm offering you immortality. Is that the thanks I get? Ever hear the term angry god? Wait till you see me. Hang on. Perhaps I haven't thought this through. To go fast. You're scheming against me in spite of my generosity. Well, you won't get the upper hand that way. Stand aside, Jones. There we go. 98, 99, 100 feet. Prepare to feel my wrath. You know, a lot of my discoveries seem like tall tales, even to me. At least there's some evidence this time. Then again, maybe not. What was that for? To ease the pain. And that marks the end of Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. Uh, we get a total number of points here at the end. There's a possible 1,000 that you can earn. Uh, but you have to solve every puzzle every single way possible uh, in order to achieve that, which I haven't quite done yet. A few things before I move on to my uh, mini-review of the game. Uh, you can uh, choose to undergo the experiment by Uberman at the very end, but if you do, uh, no matter how many beads you take, um, you'll end up suffering the same fate as him. So, I didn't think it would really um, be uh, uh, necessary to show that, since we already see what happens when you uh, activate the machine and use more than one bead. Um, you'll get a different ending, of course, if Sophia's not with you here at the very end, either. 
But as far as I know, that's the, the only uh, two alternate ways you can end the game. Uh, one where you escape without Sophia, and one where you turn into a wraith-like creature like Uberman did. So overall, Indiana Jones and the Fave Atlantis I thought was a pretty good adventure game. It certainly had a lot going for it, including a variety of environments, some great puzzles, although it did have some that were a little bit irritating, and some fun voice acting. It also was uh, pretty well known for its three-path system in the mid-game, which I thought was a unique innovation for an adventure game in the early 90s. Not a lot of them had something like that. Um, if you're pretty familiar with adventure games, uh, particularly Sierra's adventure games, and you know that quite a few of them had very strict solutions to puzzles, and could easily be cooked, uh, so to speak. Whereas in this game, there really weren't a lot of opportunities for that. There's only really a few places um, where you can permanently uh, be cooked or have to restart from your last save or something like that. Uh, one of them being that lava tile puzzle, but thankfully there isn't really a whole lot of that in this game. Uh, which is a, a nice staple of most LucasArts adventure games. The, sa the soundtrack was also pretty good as well. It felt like an Indiana Jones soundtrack, it definitely had hints of John Williams in it and it uh, provided that very serialized atmosphere that the movies gave us. And the story was pretty cool as well. It definitely felt like Indiana Jones, uh, uh, as it was meant to be in Raiders of the Lost Ark and The Last Crusade, which are, uh, as far as I know, the most beloved Indiana Jones movies. I know there are some people who like uh, The Temple of Doom. Personally, I'm not one of them, but uh, I think most people like uh, the first and the third movies, at least. Um, other than that, I'd have to say my only qualm about this game is, um, the puzzles, uh, at some points. Uh, some of them were a little bit brute force oriented, but other than that, it wasn't that bad. So that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed the LP, and I'll see you in the next adventure.